Hi, in this tutorial we'll take a look at some of the improvements made in Mario Extension Pack 4, Patch 4. And let's dive right in. Let's take a look first at some of the additions made on the shader side. Usually, you know, I have my object here and a bunch of channels and I would usually go ahead and set up a material for those. So for example, create a V-Ray material and then I would assign all my channels. So it's gonna take a second now. Um, specular color. Glossiness, I would uh, pipe in my IOR, bump map, a displacement map, and it's going to shaded mode. Give it a second. Um, I would turn off log Fresnel IOR. I would definitely go down to displacement and turn off perturbed normals so we get a smooth result. Set my displacement scale and my bump weight. So now we have a result and you know all of these settings whenever I create a new shader I always have to set all these again which is quite annoying. With Mario Extension Pack 4 Patch 4, we now have the ability to save shader presets. So we have these little pin icons here, so save shader preset and remove shader preset. And of course in the right mouse click menu, the same thing, save shader preset and remove shader preset. So I'm going to save this preset now, and it'll tell me that a new preset has been saved for the V-Ray material. So it is name dependent, so whatever is the name here will be the name of the preset. So what does that mean now in practice? Well. Let's get rid of this material that we just created painstakingly. So we back to our default one and just create a brand new one. And you'll already see all of my channel assignments, all of my settings, you know, like the bump weight, displacement, everything has been restored automatically to what the preset was set to. And this obviously works across projects as well. So for example, if you made a, a diff channel, a specular color channel here, and you assign things, in the next project, it will check if a channel with the name diff ex also exists there and would automatically hook it up. So this is a great way to just um, standardize your workflows. You know, you can have the same channels and assign them. And you know, when you create a new preset, uh, it'll always hook it up automatically for you and set all your settings the way you want. You can obviously delete a preset. So if you don't like it anymore, you create the material and then you click on the remove preset and then Basically, the next time you create a V-Ray material, you would be back to a virgin Mari way. Additional preset functionality is available via the node graph. So let's go to the Mari node graph. And I have my material here. So you can see I have the shader that I've created and it's attached to all the channel nodes. And we have the two different materials, the wood and the gold here. Now, what if I want to work on one material in isolation? So, for example, I have the simple gold here, and I want to see the entire material without having the mixture of the two materials, the wood and the gold. So, I have my gold down here, and you can see I have metal div, metal spec, metal specular color, excuse me, metal glossiness, and metal IOR. So, first of all, notice how the names are different than the channel names. So, we have diff. However, here we have metal diff. Now, this is kind of important because in the node graph, the node names don't have to exactly match the channel names in order to be compatible with the preset system. However, parts of the channel names need to be available inside of the node name. So for example, the diff part needs to appear in the nodes. So now if I just select the nodes, right mouse click, go to mis miscellaneous, which is a new menu, and choose the set nodes to shader option. And now you can see all the connections have been rewired to the original shader that was selected in your shader palette. So now we can work in isolation on this material. And once we're happy with the result, with no node selected, however, having the V-Ray material active, we just go back and set nodes to shader again. And the shader will reset itself to the state or the connections reset itself to the state they were before we launched it. So this basically acts like an isolate select that you would have on geometry just for your material. One thing you might have noticed is that I don't have a bump map for my metal material here. 
So when I isolated it, even though a bump in the space map was connected on our original shader, it clears off any connection that are not compatible. So you always have only the nodes mapped to the shader that you selected. So this can be quite useful, for example, if you want to quickly get rid of your bump in the space map, for example, for performance reasons, we can again choose set nodes to shader. And you see things have been automatically disconnected for me. Let the viewport catch up. So now we can work without the bump in the space map, which might be faster in this case. And once we're ready to see everything again, we restore things to the way they were previously. So this covers the preset system of the shaders, which is a quite a useful addition because it saves actually a lot of time over the days, you know, when you don't have to do the same things over and over. You've already seen the new addition of the miscellaneous submenu in the node graph. In here we now have the toggle radio nodes and jump to radio connection. Toggle radio nodes was previously located under the edit submenu, but has been relocated to the miscellaneous submenu just for easier access. Same with the jump to radio connection, which was previously only available by the scripts menu. One thing to note is because the location of these menu items has changed, any previously assigned hotkeys you will have to reassign because they would have been lost in the process. We also have the multi-rename nodes in here, which has also been located from the edit menu. The multi-rename nodes had a few small updates made as part of patch 4, so let's take a quick look at them. Let me create a bunch of nodes. And you can see by duplicating nodes, Mari automatically adds a number, a digit at the end, just to iterate the numbering. Multi rename nodes previously always had the remove trailing character section, so you could set how many characters to strip away from each selected node, or if only selected nodes is turned off, from all nodes in the node graph. Now we also just have a simple checkbox auto remove trailing digits. What this will do is simply scan if nodes end with numbers and then automatically strip away these numbers as well as the last space between them. So if I just hit apply now, you can see all my nodes have been stripped away of the numbers at the end and this space at the end. So this is very useful, especially if you need to make a template, for example, and you only want to you know, have a nice naming convention set up once without actually having to rename everything manually. A new addition is the ability to smart rename nodes. For that matter, a new section in here in the miscellaneous menu has been added, the smart rename nodes. And you can see I have a custom hotkey assigned, control N. However, in your installation, you would not have any hotkeys assigned by default. So you would have to go to edit preferences, uh, sorry, edit shortcuts and assign one manually. So let's see how this works. We're gonna just create a node, a tile node in this example, and rename this, for example, to metal diff and add the node identifier in brackets which is not really necessary. However, you will see in a second that this workflow is actually quite good and worth adapting. So let me add some more nodes. And let's add a merge node as well. And I'm going to duplicate this entire chain, hook it up to the over and create a paintable node for the mask here as well. So now I want to rename these two nodes, the HSV and Gamma node, according to the first node in the chain. So I'm just gonna go to miscellaneous, smart rename nodes, and you can see the metal diff identifier has been propagated through the chain downstream, and the node identifier has been replaced for each node. Same thing down here. I'm just gonna use my hotkey control N, and it has been renamed. Obviously you can rerun this process. So if I rename the first node here, for example, to wood diff, and just rerun my script, now it has been updated with a new naming. Let's take a look at the merge node. Press Ctrl N and you can see the naming has been changed to inherit the name from the secondary chain, so from the over chain. There are a couple of nodes where you are able to cycle through names. So for example, the merge node is one of them. So if I press Ctrl N again, you can see we're switching over to the first chain, so to the metal. This cycling of names is available on pretty much all layer nodes. So if you go to nodes, layer, extension pack. So we have all the multi-mixers, mixers, the merge node obviously, and under the array nodes, we have the array mix, which supports it as well. Let's take a look at the paintable node here. Usually the script works by scanning the node chain upstream, so um, to the left, to determine node names. 
However, in the case of the paintable node, there's nothing feeding in from the left. So in this case, if I press Ctrl N, you can see it's gonna check uh, downstream the node connection. So in this case, how the merge node is named. There are a couple of nodes that have exceptional behavior. For example, the bookmark node. So let me just rename this to HSV and gamma and enter a bookmark node in between. Now let's select the gamma node and press Ctrl N. And you can see I have this a bit confusing name HSV gamma because in this case, the scanning of node names skipped the bookmark node and went straight to the node before the bookmark node. So if I just change the name of the HSV node and update this as well, now it is correct. The bookmark node is exempt from any renaming. So even if I have it selected and press Ctrl N or you know the smart rename nodes, nothing happens because in this case, I want bookmarks to stay completely freely nameable without affecting naming conventions. Another uh, exceptional node is the radio node. So if I put in a radio node, and let me again change this to gamma. If I press Ctrl N again, you can see we skipped the radio node and the bookmark node and went straight to the input node here. If I took toggle off the radio node, same thing applies. You know, if I press the uh, smart rename, we still sample whatever is in the chain here. So this is a very useful tool just to quickly rename nodes. We could go to my main node graph here and just select a couple of nodes. And you know, you can quickly rename parts of your network quite easily. Next, let's look at some node additions and changes that have been made as part of patch four. If we go to nodes, procedural pattern, oh, sorry, extension pack pattern, we now have a new checker pattern. Mari by default does not ship with a checker pattern, which you know, is not something you use every day, but sometimes when you actually need it, it's quite confusing that Mario doesn't have that. So now we have a simple checker and you know, you can set your repeat and color. You can make patterns transparent, etc. And a change has also been made to the gray constant node. The gray constant node does exactly that. It flood fills your object with gray. However, previously the node was flooding the object with a value of 0 0.498. And that is because the node was created before Mari introduced more comprehensive color management. So this is kind of a leftover and this has been changed now. So we now have a value of 0 0.5. There's also now a slider added in here. So you can change the value if you don't like the standard value. Existing projects that use this node will not have a change made. So the old version of the node will still be in there in order to not change the look. However, the slider has been added to the old versions as well. This concludes the changes and additions in patch 4 of Mario Extension Pack 4, and I hope they're useful.